Welcome to day 11 of my tutorials. If you join me part way of my tutorial series, please refer to my website www.andrewb3d.com. Halfway down locates all my videos up to four here, and then please refer to my tutorial page for my rest of my tutorials up to video 10. And then for video 11 and above, you just click here and it refers to the rest of them. And you can also contact me at a.boo3d at outlet.com for my email address if you ever need to contact me. So today I'll be aiming for a 20 minute to half an hour tutorial, depending on how long it'll take for this particular uh, process what I'm going to show you. Today we'll be talking about how to import normal maps and, and inclusion maps and how to you know create a new output for the admin inclusion and depending on the time we may even start the process of of um, rendering out like the the substance designer version of height, normal and um, occlusion maps. I'll show you why I do that. There is a reason I do that. So when I import, there's two important tools. You have import and link. The difference between the two is import imports the actual image to the to the actual substance. So so it like stores it in the actual archive substance archive and then link is basically you linking a reference to that to that um, file all 3d meshes is linked bitmaps is can be linked same as import with linked if you're doing like a if you're updating it in maya or substance painter or photoshop you could then save out then reload it here because it's really linked it won't you know it would automatically update it quite quickly so i always link mine so go to bitmap and locate the file file, um, file. this is my admin occlusion so i click it and click open and it's located here For some reason, it's not seeing it. You you'll come across areas like this. So if um, LinkedIn doesn't work, import it. See how that affects it. If that still occurs then it means that there's an error within the file when you do that just reopen it into photoshop and see what the error is See, it's opened it here. If this is the case, and um, you get errors when you have bitmaps, save it as a sub, as another format. Sometimes, Substance Designer can be fussy. So I'm saving mine as a PNG. Well, that is saving. I'll link in my normal map, which is located here. And that's what it comes out with. When you've got errors in an image, you can just remove them. And restart again. So link, 
bitmap go to images there's the new PNG so you have that imports see that's corrected so the bitmap can be and you know substance designer can be quite fussy so if it doesn't accept it one format save another this is how the industry is always about it's always about problem solving is some always a problem always occur that's because there's something that's going on wrong behind the scenes and you had to locate it and solve that problem a bit like puzzle all 3d art is all about puzzles and solving that puzzle now we have two maps here you have the normal map here and you have the salt map here with the normal map which I'm now going to drag in this can't you can't add channels here you know use the defined ones but you can here you're probably thinking why have I got a base material when I'm actually attaching a normal you know like a texture onto it it's, I'm doing this to bring all of these individual nodes together into one material I do that for good housekeeping so with the normal map I'll be blending in I'm now going to blend it in with this normal map um, link here you do that using a normal a normal blend node a normal combined node sorry you do have blend um, here but it doesn't it doesn't do much it just blends it but when you're dealing with two you know two normal maps of this qu quality it's always good to combine it because you can then determine if it's you know detail if it's a channel mixer between different channels or if it's a right out low quality blend I always do my detail orientated because it's always going to be high quality you have number one and number two it's a bit like the normal mode you know the blend mode the back the foreground is always at the top and the background is always at the bottom so I'm placing my normal in my background here it'll turn it black that's because this is taking half of the channels half the data of all the channels in the normal map for one and another that's how it combines it and then you just combine it and it creates something like this you, when you do that you, you successfully combine it and then you hook it back into the normal channel and it'll bring out the normals like this which look quite decent actually I have to say myself you probably see this uh, scene here I wouldn't be too fussy about that because we can hide it using like a like a gold decoration so it would be hidden same when you come down to here a lot of that would be hidden and basically you're using the data from one normal map onto the other now as you can see this is two pointed two defined even when we went back in Photoshop and fixed it and made it a little bit more subtle it's still a little too drastic so you could always put in a blur, a blur mode this is why I like a substance designer over Photoshop Photoshop it they're both the same really people will comment saying that substance designer is more lazy you're not doing much uh, creativity and yes sure you may not be painting you do more things more technical just like a technical artist is but the difference is it's doing the same job because 
Photoshop, you're defining the histogram by your pen, you know, your Acom tablet, your your input by painting. Where this, you're actually creating the histogram using nodes. So to create the textures. So it's the same thing. Now, when you, I always use blur, blur HD, you get two blurs here. You have the normal blur here and the blur HQ. Never use this one, even though it's shipped and it's, it's good. This is better because it's much more higher quality. So you can blur it to, and you can intensify or lower the intensity of that, of the normal map. And then hook it back in. As you can see, it's made it less dramatic, it made it a little bit more subtle, which is how it looks more decent. I personally do feel it looks, makes it a little bit more decent. It looks more of a design rather than, you know, bad topology, which is not the case because it's actually in the normal map. And then we use the blend node to blend it in. Now, if it's me, the height range I'll increase just slightly. Now, you probably think, why are they included the height? What am I going to do with this height channel? It's going to waste. What I tend to do, I tend to do this. When there is an, a height map enabled like that, I normally do a normal. Oh, that's the. This is where. There's another thing I want to point out. Don't get between confused between normal and normal color. Normal color is just the color of the actual normal map. Normal converts grayscale into um, normal. You could use high normal blend like this. And in this instance, it'd be better because there's a height mat. You don't have to go and get another blend node here. You can automatically do it. So it depends on what you're after. So you put the normal map in that slot there and then the normal in the normal slot. And it creates like this, this um, normal map. Oh, I got the wrong way around, I do apologize. That's supposed to go in the normal. That's supposed to go in there and this is supposed to go in this normal bit here, so. I got it the wrong way around. <laughs> In fact, we can get rid of that. Oh no, we can't because it's. See, you go through your stages, questioning your, question yourself as we go along. It's always good to do that. And then just re reattach it there again. Okay? Basically now what I'm doing, I'm using the height map information, turn it into a normal map, combine it with a combined map of my initial mapping to, to create an even more advanced normal map. Now, when I'm dealing with the admin inclusion map here, basically what I'm doing when I'm getting um, bitmaps from this uh, from the actual fo um, folder, I'm just clicking and dragging it into the graph and it automatically imp imports it. We have this normal, there's um, occlusion. What I, would, what I normally do, set it to grayscale, add node output, because 
they were at the moment they were in a slot for um, inclusion so you had to create one yourself so you call it a name AO short for admin occlusion add item and then the drop menu you drop down menu you click admin occlusion and now you just created a new output for that and then compute thumbnail there you are and it's updated so basically what I'm going to do just like I did with the normal map of I'm blending it using this um, this node here which means when you come to this base mode you got you got enable ambient occlusion add a blend node and then blend them both together using the overlay when it doesn't look right like that that's because the blending mode is not accurate for this adequate for this um, map then just like Photoshop you have to find the blend mode that is appropriate so for this it will be multiply and there you have the actual admin occlusion so I'm taking data from this channel and here what I'm doing if you haven't noticed I'm double clicking the pins here it brings out the individual um, data um, information here like there's the rough list that's the normal that's the base and you can you you can you know find out what the what the actual texture looks like in that pin in that actual node which is always useful technique to do and then put the output into the ambient occlusion and then connect the ambient occlusion to the AO And that's what it looks like with the amnesia occlusion. If you click off of it, you know, delete that pin. Sometimes when you have new nodes, it doesn't register. So you had to, we, you had to through the outputs in 3D mode and then we apply it. That's what it looks like without the am occlusion. This is with much more higher quality. Now as you can see it looks realistic and it looks very high quality. And with this um, um, rough disk control, you can control how glossy you want it. So if you want the wood to be very gloss, glossy like like that, you can. So it looks like it's like a like a varnished wood, or you can do like that. So it's semi-polished for this particular. Asset, I think that's appropriate. I like that. Now, it's. I think now we can move on to the actual generating the other maps necessary for this um, salt dis the salt dispenser. So to do that, you click on the the model and bank information, more information. If you already have other um, other um, bacon settings here, 
just click this cross and it deletes them. Now, on this side, you have the actual objects. You have the, the plane, which is underneath the actual asset. And the salt, you have to, you can only have one clicked at the time. If not, you'll create like a blending and, and it will not be accurate to how you want it. Also, when you're doing, you know, banking, you have sometimes, depending on how you want your amnesty occlusion in normal map, you have to um, explode the actual mesh in Maya, then re-import it as it's exploded, so you don't create artifacts. Because we are dealing with just one object, we'll be all right here. So select salt. Always have it as linked, never embedded. That embedded is when it's actually imported here, but it doesn't save the file, which is not good because if you, if you're creating something that is, you know, if you're creating like an asset and you want to have the norm map to be able to be edited in like Photoshop, you have it linked because then it'll save and then link it back in and just like you do in your bitmaps basically. So in the bakers, you click the plus sign and I always start with admin occlusion from mesh first. That's the most biggest one there because ambient occlusion deals with the light and shadow and then you can use and drop down normal for mesh and then what it will do then as you go down the list it uses the previous baker as a base so for example I can then add curvature now this curvature will be baked based off of the information that will be baked from the ambient occlusion and it does it one after the other straight away with no with no problem. Now you will see this exclamation mark. The reason we know is it's because there's no actual linked mesh to the to the actual far, um, baker. The reason we know I have here is because I used it in my previous uh, my previous asset before doing the salt dispenser. So when you get like that, just click the cross button plus the plus sign in from resource and then click the high and OK it. It will come up the default settings here. Do not change a thing because as soon as you change it, it will cause problems. So don't do that. Now this been I had the exclamation mark as well as because I didn't had override common output file parameters. It's because I the previous model defined where I want my actual uh, file to be outputted so I can re edit it and locate it quicker. By clicking that, it basically tells the co computer to output to the actual file where you saved them, basically, where you saved all your files, where you got all your bitmaps from. And just do the same again for the normal mapping. Again, click that. You can always um, re reorder them so the normal after the curvature. And now, and it's all the case of creating maps that is all what you need to use. I know most um, no, um, filters in Substance Designer will be using curvature, most will. If you want more, uh, um, what are filters? I'll be explaining that in a later date. Just click and add more. 
position well space normals that's an important one because that one creates a normal map based on the object in the world it's world space you know how big it is and all the all that information is in an imported you know how big this is in comparison to the world position is position of the actual information on the mesh so you can say up to down left to right basically it's the x y and c values if that makes sense and then the uh, these are the main ones that you'll be working to create now output size because I'm working on a smaller asset 1024 click OK you'll get this please wait computing it can take some time so while you wait I'll explain here where it says 2048 reason it's done like that is because of this map which is set to absolute at 2k so we can lower it to be at the correct size and as you can see on the list the rendering is complete these are all the maps as you can see different information to the our ambient occlusion which is that this is why I do more than one this is the normal map it's taken all the information based off the the high mesh and put it onto a low see there's a difference a big difference this is the height map the curvature position and all the space normals so I always always use not only my initial baked uh, maps from um, normal um, Maya soy Maya but I always use it in the compact in combined with substance designer I'll show you this process next time I think I'll leave leave it here so I say thank you for watching my tutorial and I hope you have learned a lot and always remember to save your work thank you for watching